We know getting enough good sleep is pivotal for children's health and well-being. New research from UBC is suggesting, though, that regulations around sleep for licensed child care facilities across the country aren't consistent. Here in BC, the research found policies focus on maintaining a safe sleep environment. Compare that with Ontario, where rules specify daily sleep amounts. For more on how this could be affecting the children is CBC medical columnist Dr. Melissa Lem. Doctor, thanks for joining us. What are the big impacts of a regular sleep patterns on kids? Well, Dan, good sleep is an essential building block for a kids' health because it allows their brains and bodies to recover. But unfortunately, sleep problems, whether it's insomnia or not getting enough, affect up to 40% of kids in Canada. And this can have major effects on their health and development. The biggest impacts we as parents typically notice are around behavior. They tend to be more cranky, reactive, and hyperactive. And then over time, if they don't get enough sleep, they also tend to have higher rates of anxiety and depression and lower attention and intelligence. Poor sleep is also strongly linked with childhood obesity, high blood sugars, and, and high blood pressure. So sleep is really something we need to pay more attention to in kids. What improvements do you think there could be to sleep rules in BC? For example, we compared them with Ontario. And, and do you think there ought to be a national standard? Well, you meant, as you mentioned, BC's childcare sleep regulations do lag behind a lot of other provinces, so we don't have standards around daily sleep programming. Um, some of the more, most important areas, I think, though, that BC could improve include specifying how much nap time caregivers need to offer kids of different ages, and then also ones around safety. Right now, we don't have to, uh, there's no mandatory monitoring of kids while they sleep. And I think we should have consistent national sleep standards to make it more regulated for children across Canada. And I think this is really important because a lot of families struggle with getting their kids good sleep, whether it's because parents have long working hours or because they haven't been educated about how important it is. And I think our child care systems have a big role to play in improving our kids' health by improving their sleep. What are the key things parents and guardians do you think ought to consider when it comes to their children's sleep habits and, and perhaps how much they can influence what happens at a daycare? Well, Dan, it's all about quantity and quality and prioritizing this by making sure that kids have good sleep routines and avoiding overscheduling them with different activities. So they should have dark, quiet and a bit cool rooms. They need to have relaxing routines without screen time before bedtime. And we also need to keep in mind that kids under five need up to 14 hours total sleep in 24 hours. And I think parents do have an important role to bring these important guidelines to daycares and to different childcare facilities that are licensed if they want their kids to be healthy. All this being said, despite how important sleep is, we shouldn't be too hard on ourselves if kids have the odd bad sleep because of teething or being sick or traveling. What's important is, is getting them back on that good sleep wagon as quickly as possible and helping them sleep well the majority of the time. And lastly, we know you're coming to us from COP16 in Colombia, uh, the UN's Biodiversity Conference. We know biodiversity loss leads to increased risk of infectious diseases. What movement do you hope to see on that issue at, at the meeting you're at? Well, first, I think it's really important for us to know what's at stake for our health if we don't conserve nature and biodiversity. About 40% of our modern medicines come from plants. And this year, a big scientific paper was published showing that biodiversity loss is the biggest cause of infectious disease outbreaks, including pandemics worldwide, even more than climate change. And we know in BC during the 2021 heat dome, people who, who lived further away from green spaces had a higher risk of death because their neighborhoods were physically hotter. So what I would like to see coming out of this meeting is greater, greater awareness and action in the health community around the impacts of, of biodiversity loss on our health and healthcare system. And then of course, meaningful financial investments to protect nature and to make sure that kids and adults have the education they need to support conservation, which we know will improve our health. Dr. Melissa Lem, we always appreciate your time and expertise. Safe travels. Thanks, Dan.